Hey, how's it going? Today it's time for our motorcycle safety video. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we want to talk about when we talk about motorcycle safety is equipment. So uh, we got a bike first of all, and then we got also our um, our helmet. That's like two usual uh, main pieces of equipment right here, okay? So let's start talking about exactly, um, let's first start taking a look at the bike, okay? The first thing you want to do is you want to look at the tread on your bike, okay? Now this is the, uh, Tread on the tire over here, you can see it looks pretty good, right? Uh, it's pretty new actually. These things will be, uh, there's a lot of bare tires that I see around uh, on a lot of vehicles. So I was looking to buy one used. Cars, spikes, a lot of the tread pattern is horribly gone. You can look at my tread, it's, it's looking real good, right? So just so you know, um, that's something you definitely should be taking into consideration when you look at a bike. What else? Well, the next part of the bike that you definitely want to look at as in terms of safety is going to be um, if you're buying a bike, right, you want to make sure that the frame right over here, this frame is in good condition. Okay, You don't want this frame to be have any signs of any cracks, um, any significant rusting, anything like that. Okay. Also, um, just so you know, there's two things that can really make a bike uh, go for a salvage title. And that's if the, um, the frame here is cracked, or if the forks over here, these are called the forks, are gone. Okay, so you check out the forks too, they're real important. Um, over here, right, if you start to see some, uh, if I push down on the bike, so when that happens, you don't want to see any like, uh, kind of like maybe like a brownish uh, liquid coming out of there. That means that these forks are leaking and you're going to have to get those fixed at some point. You can ride with the leaking fork for quite some time though, but um, it's just not good and uh, you should be able to negotiate the price down okay so that being the bike right the actually the tires are the most important part of um one of the most important parts of the bike you'll hear a lot of people say oh bikes can uh brake faster and accelerate faster than cars you know that's actually not really true okay the thing is that really what makes a car or a truck able to stop is the tires the friction of the tires on the ground so the thing is that, you know, if you don't have good traction, you're just not going to have the stopping power that a, that a car will. You ever see like some big trucks, they'll have like double layers of wheels? Why is that? Because the thing is that more friction on the ground allows it to stop quicker. So, you know, if they have big, fat, huge tires and you're on a bike and you got like a good amount of weight on there and you're, uh, you're um, not really... Uh, you, know, you got these skinny little tires, they got big thick tires giving them more friction on the road per weight, then uh, you're not going to be stopping as fast as them. Let's say the car in front of you is on solid pavement and you hit a patch of gravel. And they're going to stop, you're going to keep rolling, and you're going to hit the back of their car. Let's let me into the helmet over here, okay? Now, it's real silly. A lot of people here in Grenada don't like to wear the helmet. I can't really attribute to anything else other than vanity. But let me tell you some things about the helmet that, um, that you might not know. First of all, on the back of the helmet, right, it's got something called uh, DOT, right? There's also something called SNELL, S-N-E-L-L. -L, and that means it's got to pass certain minimum requirements in order to get rated for that. Now the thing is that um, that particular helmet though, what, what, is it got to, what test does it have to pass? The only test it has to pass is not even from like a six foot height, from a five foot height. Like you're sitting on a bike, right? You take it from five feet, you drop it, and it doesn't crack. That's the, that's the summation of the test. That's all it is. It's not really like these bikes, these helmets are really incredibly hardy, okay? And what's inside of the helmet? Let's take a look, right? Really, if you take a look inside, right? You see that little white stuff in there? Okay, there's like a little mesh and there's like a little white pad in there. Literally all it is is styrofoam. It's just like a regular bike helmet, right? Just a, a basically a large ping pong ball type of thing made of styrofoam with a plastic shell on it. Some people want to pay $200 for a motorcycle helmet. They're just paying for styrofoam. It's ridiculous, but that's just, uh, you know, it's just the world we live in, whatever. There are some cool uh, helmets that I do like, actually. Let me see if I can go inside and get my other helmet over here. All right, this is my other helmet, and a lot of things that people do is they'll put the helmet down on the ground and they'll put this surface right here on the gravel. 
right? That's gonna scratch it up. Don't do that. Last is clothing. Don't wear black at night. Reflective gear like this is best. This is one of the most frequent accidents that occurs. A car turns left or right in front of you. Even though they could see you clear as day, daytime conditions, easy visibility, they somehow mentally just didn't register that you were there. This is definitely a situation you need to look out for. When you're passing a vehicle, this is what you want to see. No, I'm not talking about a hot blonde checking you out. What I'm talking about is you need to know that the driver has seen you and understands that you are there. Use the same principle regarding pedestrians. If they're not looking at you, that means that they haven't realized that you're there and they could just walk out into the street right in front of your vehicle. Don't be afraid to use your horn, like a lot. All right, let's talk about turns. Most accidents happen while riders are in a turn. In fact, a majority of accidents happen with no other vehicle involved. This happens because riders went into a turn too quickly. Of course, realize that if another vehicle is in the turn or if there's a vehicle around the corner that you don't see, this mistake can turn absolutely deadly as you veer into the wrong lane and smash face first into an oncoming vehicle. Going too fast means that you will not turn enough, leaving you in the wrong lane with deadly consequences. So look at the picture here. There's a red line and a green line. By the time you've reached the red line, you should have been braking for about 50 to 100 yards prior. Between the red and green line, you should be coasting. Once you hit the green line, you should start accelerating. Remember that it is friction that will carry you through the turn. Braking while you're in a turn will result in a loss of control of your vehicle. Braking in a turn at high speed is pretty much a guaranteed wipeout. So let's say, oops, you've made a horrible mistake and you got too happy with the throttle. You went into the turn too fast and you realize, uh-oh, you're not turning enough. How can you make your vehicle turn faster? I introduce to you counter steering. While the picture gives the steps usually taught in motorcycle schools about how to do counter steering, I think the best way for you to really learn is to have a turn where you can see what's on the other side of the turn, you're not going that fast, and you can just practice on your own. Just like riding a bike, you know, I could tell you how to ride a bike all day, but there's nothing like actually getting the experience of doing it for yourself. Now this picture I feel doesn't really completely accurately represent um, how far you should be leaning um, away from the turn. So here's another picture that I think is much better. Alright, now let's talk about riding with a passenger. I really like this picture because it shows the person in the back with the arms around the other person's waist. I think that's really the safest uh, position. Sometimes people, they want to, you know, have a certain amount of personal distance between um, themselves and the uh, rider. So they'll put their hands on the back something like this some people are gonna see this and be like oh look she's got his breast up on his back or if it's another guy oh look where his crotch is that doesn't look right listen in this case that's just incredibly silly modesty has to take a backseat to safety if your passenger wants to look over your shoulder like in this picture that's fine their head doesn't weigh a lot it's not gonna make a big difference on the bike you should be fine but ideally just like in this photo the passenger is completely aligned with the rider in front this is true during turns and on straightaways. As you may know from riding a regular bike, the most unstable time is when you are stopped. So when you're slowing down or when you're taking off, you should tell your passenger that that's not the time to be moving around or shifting their weight. Also tell them that during turns that you don't want their assistance and to lean into the turn or anything like that. Trust me, it happens. Let them know before you take off and start riding. Just say keep your body aligned with mine for the whole ride. If you need to adjust your seating or scratch your nose or whatever, then let me know and take care of that when we're stopped and then tap me when you're ready for us to start riding again. Alright, time for the final topic, riding in the rain. In the rain, obviously you need to decrease your speed. Now the most dangerous time just so you know is when the rain first comes down. All the oil that got baked down into the pavement floats to the top as oil floats on water. This oil is most likely to drop in the middle of the lane, you know, where the engine is. So try to stay in line with the tire tread of the cars in front of you. Be extra careful in the turns. Going over oil on a straightaway isn't so bad, but in a turn, it's a recipe for disaster.
Riding a bike can be a lot of fun. It can also be low risk. I hope this video was informative and I wish you happy and safe travels. Thanks for checking it out and if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them below.